How's it going guys? Today we are going to be going over another interview question. This interview question is called letter combinations of a phone number. This is a pretty popular question from what I understand. It looks like it's asked by a lot of companies. It's asked by Facebook, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, Uber, JP Morgan, and Morgan Stanley. Uh, the problem description says, given a string containing digits from two to nine inclusive, return all possible letter combinations that the number could represent. And the mapping of digit to letters, just like on the telephone buttons, is given below. Note that one does not map to any letters. So we're basically asked, like, hey, given a phone number, um, how many different letter combinations are there? And so we're, right, we're given this kind of, like, screen that's going to associate a number with a variety of letters, potentially. So if we're given the example 23 as our phone number, uh, these are the outputs, right? Because A can be represented by the number two, and then we would go to the number three, right? So we chose A as our mapping for the number two. Now we have to choose a mapping for our number three, so we choose D. Uh, so that's one mapping, and then another mapping would be A to E, right? A to two, and E for three, A, F, B, D, B, E, B, F, so on and so forth. So, um, this is a good question that's kind of like disguised as like a BFS. So what we really want to do here is kind of like uh, take one number, so let's say two for example, and we want to pass, um, we kind of like want to go through all the representations of two. So two in this case can be represented as A, B, or C. So we want to take one representation of two, so say A, and then move on to the next number. So in this case, it'd be three. So now we're passing um, the string A to this recursive call, and then we want to match up that A with all the possible combinations of three. So we would get right A, D, A, E, and A, F as our recursive calls one, two, and three underneath our uh, root for A. So that would give us A, D, A, E, and A, F, and then we would move on to the next combination or the next representation of A, sorry, of two, I'm misspeaking. So now we've already done A, so it would be B, right? So now we have another thing that we wanna hold still. So we're holding B still now, and now we're gonna go on to the next number, which would be three again. So now we have B, and then the three different uh, letters that three can represent are D, E, and F, so those would be the three things underneath that part of the tree. So Hopefully that's making sense. It's a little bit hard to explain. It's kind of uh, tricky to think about and it's very uh, kind of like in-depth um, in terms of like recursion, but essentially what we're going to do is for every number, we're going to take every possible representation of that number and then pass uh, that on to all our potential recursive calls that we would have. So with that being said, it's a little confusing again. Sorry if it's not a great explanation, but hopefully once we write this code, it'll be a little bit more clear. So we want to return a list of strings that represent all the potential uh, combinations, right? Or all the potential, uh, yeah, letter combinations is what they're calling it. So we just want to make a variable to actually return. So I typically will call this thing result. So we'll have a list of strings because that's what the function wants. We'll call it result and we'll set it equal to a new array list that's going to hold strings. And so now I just like to do error checking so we can do some quick error checking. So like if the digits that they give us are null or the length of digits uh, is zero, we have nothing to process, right? So if that's the case, we'll just return our result, which is just an empty list in this case. Otherwise, what we want to do is we need, right, we need some easy way to uh, understand that two maps to A, B, and C, three maps to DEF, four maps to GHI, so on and so forth. So I would propose that we just make an array of strings, call it mappings. So let's do that. So string mappings is equal to, and then I just kind of like to format it like this. And we notice, right, there is no, so zero doesn't map to anything and one doesn't map to anything. But just to be consistent with like our indices, like two being represented as the second index in our array, zero based, I would like to keep uh, kind of like dummy values as the zero and one index. So zero 
and one will just be nothing. But now when we say like mappings of two, we want that to map to ABC. Uh, D, E, F for three, G, H, I, um, J, K, L. So I'm just going through and doing these mappings, M, N, O, M, N, O, uh, P, Q, R, S, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, yep, T, U, V, and then X, Y, Z, and I'm assuming that's it. Oh, don't, whoops, obviously the alphabet, <laughs> uh, W, X, Y, Z. Cool, so now we have our mappings. So now we need to kind of come up with a way to do what I was trying to explain before. And so I was explaining that like recursively it would be pretty intuitive to do. So I personally like to solve problems like this by having like a shell function kind of as like the driver. So in this case, this is like our shell. Um, it's kind of just setting stuff up for us. And now we'll call a recursive function that's like, in my eyes, just gonna like magically gonna give us the answer. So we can call this something like, let's just do letter combinations recursive, nice and simple. And this recursive function is gonna need a couple things, right? So it's gonna need result because my idea is like, we're just gonna call this recursive function, it's gonna populate the thing that we need to return and then all we'll have to do after is return result and that will be it. So all the work is actually gonna be done in this recursive function so we need to pass it result so we can add all the answers to it. We need to pass it digits so that it actually knows uh, what numbers we're dealing with. We need to pass it a string that's gonna represent like the current combination that we're dealing with in each recursive call. Um, we need to pass it an index, like where in the digits we're currently uh, on, like where, what number. And then we also need to pass it our mappings. Um, and let's, let's actually just call this mapping singular. Um, Cool, so again, seems like kind of hand weavy, but now this is like where the meat of our program is actually gonna be. So we'll make our function public void, right? Cause it's gonna actually add everything into this uh, list of strings and then we'll just have to return it. So it's not gonna return anything. It's just gonna uh, modify our variable called result. So it's not gonna return anything. We're naming it letter combinations, recursive. It's gonna take uh, a string Oh, sorry, a list of strings called result. It's going to take a string called digits. It's going to take a string, we'll call it current, because that's the current combination that we're dealing with. We're gonna take an integer called index. And finally, uh, a, a, an array of strings called mapping. Awesome, so that's kind of like a lot to pass to a function. Uh, you could kind of clean it up if you wanted to a little bit, but this is, just one solution. So in our recursive calls, we're gonna need a base case. And in other words, we're gonna need a place to know when to stop. So we wanna stop this recursive function when we have a correct combination. And so the way to know if we have a correct combination is basically by the length, right? So if we've added enough characters, then we have a combination. So we can just check if our current, uh, Actually, let's do, if our index, let's just say, you could do it either way. So you could say if like your current's length is equal to something, or let's just do index. So if our index in this case is equal to digits.length, um, then we know that we have no other numbers of process right now because we have a valid combination. So we'll just say result.add, and we'll say current because that represents our combination, and then we'll just return because we don't want to continue. But if our index is not equal to our current in any of our recursive calls, we need to keep processing our current combination. So what we can do now is like what we were saying. So we wanna get the current mapping and then pass for each of its possibilities. So like if we were on two, the number, we need to pass A, B, and C to our recursive calls. So for the first thing that we wanna do is we probably want something like string letters and we'll set that equal to mapping. And now we wanna get the digit that we're actually at. So digits.care at index minus zero. And so this will just basically convert our, um, our number as a string into an integer. So if we were looking at, right, so this will be something like digits um, of, you know, the third thing or something might be the number four. 
but four will be a string, so minus zero will just convert it into an integer so that when it's looking for an index and mapping, it's passing an integer and not actually a string. So that takes care of now, like we have letters to process, and now we need to iterate through them, right? So four int i equals zero, well, i is less than letters dot length, i plus plus. Um, and so now what we wanna do is we just wanna make a recursive call, right? So we now uh, grab the letters of the current number that we're on that could uh, be represented by that number. So like two again would be A, B, C. And now we just need to make recursive calls, uh, passing A in one of them, B in another one of them, and then C in the final one. So that's why we're iterating through letters. So letters in this case would be something like ABC. So now we make a recursive call. So we'll say letter combinations recursive. And we wanna pass results again. We wanna pass digits, right? So those things stay the same. We wanna to add to current, right? Letters dot care, whoops, care at I, so now this is actually adding like A or B or C depending on what index we are on in the letters. Okay, so then we also need to pass our index, but we need to increment it, right? So that we go to the next letter in our next recursive call or the next number rather. And then we just need to pass our mapping so that again, we have a way to actually translate the number two to the letters ABC or three to DEF, that sort of thing. And I think that should just about do it. So again, from the top, super quickly, sorry, this is like a long video, but we make something called a result that's gonna store all the combinations. We do some error checking, and if there's any problems, we just return an empty list. Then we make a mapping so that we can make sense of all the numbers mapping to all the potential letters that they represent. Then we call a magical recursive function that's just gonna do all our work uh, that will actually add the combinations to result, so then we just have to return a result. So now in our recursive function, we need to know when to stop. So our base case is gonna be if our current combination, we could do it like this. Current combination is the length that we want, so the length of digits, or in this case, we have an index. So we'll just say if our index is at our last uh, number that they're asking us to use. So in this case, like if it was two, three, if our index was one, our recursive calls would end. Uh, and if it is, right, then we have a valid combination, so we add it to result and we return so we don't continue. Otherwise, we wanna find the letters that are represented by the current number we're at in digits, iterate through all the letters it can possibly represent, and then just pass uh, whatever letter we're on in letters to our next recursive call, and we'll increment our index so that we go to the next letter, sorry, the next number in digits. So let's make sure this works. Uh, 19, we forgot a semicolon, right? Cool. Awesome, and it works. So guys, if that was helpful, be sure to leave a thumbs up and subscribe. I release a video every day so that you guys can learn about a new tech interview. Hopefully this helps you with your preparation. Uh, yeah, good luck on all your interviews and I'll see you guys next time.